This program is brought to you by BASF, the chemical company. Welcome to Stuff to Blow Your Kid's Mind. My name is Robert Lamb. And I'm Julie Douglas, and today we are talking about gravity. What is gravity, right? Obviously, it's the force that holds us on the planet. It's also the force that makes a, a clown's pants fall down at the circus. It binds the moon to the earth and the earth to the sun. But what is this force really? Well, according to Albert Einstein, it's not so much a force, but an actual curvature of space-time. And we are going to illustrate that kind of tricky theory today using this. Uh, this is going to be our space-time fabric, and it's really easy to put together. In fact, we just used uh, some binder clips that we got from an office supply store, a hula hoop you might even have at home, um, and then a little bit of plastic, which is really inexpensive, easy way to illustrate this. Right, and it's illustrating space-time. You can think of this in terms of space and time as being two very uh, observable aspects of the universe, all right? Uh, take a football field, for example. We can measure the distance across it, all right? That's space. We can also measure the time it takes to walk across that field. That's time. Space-time are these two concepts interwoven into a single fabric. So I'm going to start off with a small object, okay? You can think of this as a moon. All right, it doesn't have much weight to it. It doesn't have as much mass. So when I place it into space-time, you don't see that much of an impression or a dip. Space-time is not warped around it all that much. And I can just send it across space-time there, and uh, it, again, it doesn't make much of an impression. Now I'm going to grab a far more massive object. You can think of this as the sun. It's more massive. It's heavier. And when I place it, into space-time, you can see more of a dip. You can see a curve of space-time all around it. Now shoot our moon out into yeah, the middle. Yeah, let's see what happens when we put our moon over here. There it goes, Zoom. drawn in by gravity because the space-time is warped around the more massive object. It's a really good visualization of what happens when space curves and time slows down as it approaches an object. So in our experiment, we were able to observe how space-time warps around a sufficiently massive object. And the closer you are to that object's center of mass, the more space-time is warped. So if you were to think about the Earth, a massive object, and its center of gravity, and you were then to take this experiment, this thought experiment about, say, me living at the top of the world's tallest building, and you living at the ground level of this building, and let's say we decided to meet up, I don't know, 30, 40 years later and compare time on our wristwatches, we would find that time had behaved differently for both of us. In fact, your watch would have clocked in about eh, a couple billionths of a second slower than mine, and it's real evidence of gravity play on time. That's right. Time passes faster on the roof of a building than it does in the basement. It moves faster in orbit than it does on Earth. And if we were to travel to a sufficiently massive object, something like a black hole, which is tremendously massive and warps time and space to a significant amount, if we could approach that object without being crushed, we would see that difference in milliseconds explode into a difference in centuries. Gravity doesn't only affect very large objects like planets, it also affects very tiny objects such as a speck of dust. Travel out here into the planetary nebula and you'll find large clouds just filled with nothing but gas and dust and it's all just hanging around doing nothing until something stirs it all up. Yeah, and to think about what might stir it up, think about your own home with, say, sunlight streaming through a window and your dog tearing through the living room and then seeing the dust and that sunlight collide and just break apart. Well, the same thing can happen with a nebulae if it were to be hit by, say, a comet. Particles would begin to collide with each other, clumps would be formed, and then even more larger clumps would be formed, and then you'd have more gravity and more mass than the unclumped particles around it. This process is called accretion, and it's kind of like a snowball rolling down a mountain, except it takes a very long time. The object begins to grow and grow and grow, more mass, more gravity, eventually forming objects such as moons, planets, suns, even whole solar systems or galaxies. And it's this unseen force, gravity, that binds all of us together. This program is brought to you by BASF, the chemical company.